We're in Great Brick Hill. We're doing quite a large installation today. So on this property, it's single phase. So we're still sort of limited a bit on what we can do, but we've got 30 solar panels going on here. There's 18 on the front aspect, spread out sort of nine and nine over two strings on the front, and then another 12 on the rear. So this is all gonna be mated up to a 10 kilowatt uh, Fox inverter, and we've got 10 kilowatts of the Fox EQ range of stackable batteries. So um, I think this is the first video we've used these batteries. So keen to uh, show you guys how they look. We're gonna be installing the batteries stacked here and the inverter on the wall here, uh, just to the left of this gas cupboard. So we'll be fitting a new fuse board inside the meter cupboard, distributing from that for all the vehicle charger, which is gonna run down there. And then, like I say, the batteries and the inverter sat above it. Slightly tricky installation, this one, because of this brick here at the bottom need to ensure that the batteries, once they're bolted together, are strapped back to the wall to you know, avoid any tilting. And um, the cable sort of difference in depth, we'll need to consider that when routing any wiring as well. Yeah, you don't have to cut these off. They're thin enough, they just go. Oh, straight up. Literally, just like, yeah. Back in, back. Lovely. That's what we like. So I've got the bottom. Smooth installation. One's on that side, I'll get the bottom ones on here. Cool. And then hopefully the rails are Rail turns now. out and the panel is exactly, yeah. 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 Right, no worries, it sounds like something's reversing. Beautiful. Let's get some screws in. We've used the all-in-one inverter. We've used these batteries a few times. We did an installation for the Cottage Bakery in Amptill, uh, where we've got quite a bit of the EQ cube storage. But this is one, we were at the Solar Battery and Storage Show last week, and we were talking to Fox about their new, their new, I forget what it's called now, but their new basically equivalent of a Tesla Powerwall with 10 kilowatt. And that was what we were originally gonna fit in this installation, but, after our conversation with them, we found that the version one is not going to allow for battery expansion plugged straight into that first unit, uh, which obviously for us is not good because you're having to buy a whole other inverter just to add more batteries, which we don't like. But V2 will have the ability to add batteries straight into it. So obviously we're looking forward to doing our first installation with that. Um, but simply put this is a better product for this particular installation or certainly against the v1 because we have stackable batteries and expandable storage um so if the customer decides later on oh i want another five kilowatts another eight kilowatts whatever it can be put into this system whereas we were really sort of um unfortunately limited with the other system we were going to install but hopefully not too long in the next sort of few months they'll release v2 and we'll be able to install one of those as well because they look very smart very much like a power wall, but with a slightly lower capacity of um, nine kilowatts usable instead of 13 and a half usable. Your CTs are, it's all just, just the basic information is listed straight out for you as soon as you open the box. So can't go wrong. That's gonna need to be removable. So we are just dust. That drain cover is obviously going to need to be removable, so we couldn't install this battery over it. But luckily, this system sits just in front of it, so that's still going to be able to be accessed once we've got the batteries in place. Maybe you're into some people. <laughs> some people are into feet, aren't they, mate? <laughs> Takes all sorts. Yeah, big boy. Basically, I've worked out the um, where the space is where it needs to be, and then where I've come over with the rafters, I've had to adjust the where exactly where the panels are a little bit so that we can um, get on these rafters because these hooks don't have any adjustment left and right. But they're a really good system because we don't have to chisel out any tiles. They sit nice and flush, so it's worth it to have this. All we do is take the tiles out, hook stop, hook rest. This is there to stop any movement on this coming down and breaking this tile underneath because it sits quite flush. So, hook stop in, exactly where the normal tile would go. Couple of nails, just to secure it. And 
then we can fit the actual hook. There's two fixings. Two fixings straight into the rafters. And as I said with these, no tile adjustments, so we can just put the tiles back in. Beautiful. Lovely. Thank you. Hands off. Some great handle off, yep. Yeah. Gotta send these back like the Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> So just get the tails ready. This is gonna come from the meter up into the backup box and then from the backup box back down to supply the house. So in the event of a power cut, the uh, Fox EPS box will take over and it will use the battery and the inverter to run the property fully off grid. Right, join us at day two on our 29 panel installation at Great Brick Hill. So since I saw you yesterday, I've carried on installing the inverter and battery setup here and the automatic changeover. So that bit you can see just behind me is the backup box, essentially in the event of a power cut, just like with a Tesla gateway, that's going to uh, interrupt, disconnect from the grid and allow us to run from the batteries and the inverter that we've got installed here today. So since you were here, we've run the DC cables up the side of the building. We've just got some stickers to put on them. Run that all through the loft and got it out onto the roof. And we've installed the first array of eight panels at the front. So Gary's just starting to load up the next part of the front array. So it's nine panels. And while he's doing that, I'm just getting some testing and some sort of final connections done down here. Then I'll join Gary on the roof. We'll get these panels all uh, installed. And uh, in the meantime, Jack's at the back loading up the panels for the rear. So as soon as we're done at the front, we'll jump straight on the rear and continue there. Don't want you being held up, do I, sweetie? <laughs> 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 Decision, workmanship, mate. Right, we are we are good to go. So we're going to get some voltage tests now, and let's see what our first string is producing.
Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely lovely. Two. That one's going to follow the same route. Once I've checked the voltage. Start these two off. So what I've just done is connected up the first string of solar panels, powered up the inverter and the battery. So at least the energy that's being generated by those solar panels that we just installed is going into the battery, even though I haven't done the AC side yet for the property to use it. So this stuff, even though it's very short length, I can still bend it. That, I wouldn't be able to bend it if it was that short, essentially. This means we can get nice shapes, swing things in nice and neatly into positions. The DNO changed to this cable about a year or so ago as well, so for the most part, it's all you see now is fle flexi tails. Nice. Lovely. Meters back on. We've got our uh, oh, just test that. First we fit between earth and live. So it's off at the minute because we've got to turn our backup box on. Bolts now. Our meter's just livened up. We can check that that trips and all operates as normal. And now I'm happy that we can basically go ahead, go back inside, and re-energize the house. Cool. So we're just going to uh, check the charger operates and that the charger actually sees any faults if we introduce a fault into it. So steady state now I'm gonna tell it that I've got a vehicle plugged in perfect now I'm gonna introduce a major fault perfect now I'm gonna bring it back over to original status so this is um, just basically ready to go and then I'm gonna introduce a fault here now with the earth in yeah straight away no problem so I'm happy that that all works as it should um, so now next thing to do is to get this on the customers phone and set up the app so that they can use their electric vehicle charger just change <laughs> These EV chargers also have the ability for RFID, so I'm just gonna check the functionality on this to make sure no one else can use the charger. So I'll just set the charger as if I was gonna use it, and I will swipe the RFID card, and lovely, that's just started charging. So, all happy, ready to go. Mm. So it's one of them, if it's up to you, how you wanna do it, at some point I need Jack to jump up and stick them labels on in the loft for me, oh, yeah, bring yeah, the ladders yeah, down. Yeah. Do that, yeah. I'll get take those do it now. Up. Yeah, do that now. I'll, I'll do the last three up, panels. I help you get them on, yeah? Right, you're right with that. So we have finished the installation for today. Gary's still got to come back, uh, replace unfortunately a solar panel that was cracked. We only noticed it as we were installing it. Normally we notice as we're unpacking the boxes, but these things happen on transportation. Luckily our wholesaler is getting a new one out for us tomorrow. So Gary's just got one panel to swap, but for now we've got the uh, front two strings and the rear string all powered up. I'll have to come back and retest once Gary's added the extra panel in, obviously to confirm the new voltage once we've added that in. Um, and make sure that tallies up with what it should be. But other than the weather, very cloudy, which is a big shame because we can't really demonstrate what the system can do. It's generating about one and a half kilowatts right now, which is great for a low light condition. Um, batteries have got up to 50% charge and it is currently running the house off grid. So apps set up on the customer's phone, everything's all good. We've tested the system and this one, like I said, has a backup box. So in the event of a power cut, this will continue to operate. Um, very happy with the new updates to the firmware and app that Fox have brought out as well. So again, once again, recommend Fox products highly. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, we were going to be installing a different sort of all-in-one inverter that's a bit more like a Tesla Powerwall, but unfortunately after having the conversation with them on the solar battery storage show, it's not really the product we want it to be yet. So in the meantime, we've installed the Fox Cube setup and uh, yeah, extremely happy with it and it's expandable for the customer. So. Going forward, should we wish to add any more storage, the option's right there. 
and we've also paired this one up with a Fox EV charger. So all in one app, they can control the power flow of what's going on with the electricity, and it can also prevent the EV from charging during the event of the power cut. It's all good.